Hey you guys, Mickey here. I hope you're doing well. I'm here in the sunroom and I'm messing with some tomato transplants and I thought um, good reason to make a video on how to grow tomatoes here in Houston because it is a crop that is not the easiest. We have some challenges with our heat and everything. So here we are, it's the end of January and the tomato transplants are uh, coming along. Now for transplants of most things, it's about eight to 10 weeks to uh, from a seed to a transplant for like peppers and th things that take a little while so for us that means starting the seeds before the new year because our planting dates for tomatoes are as early as the first week of February really um, sometimes the earlier the better so bigger picture for us our tomato seasons are spring and fall uh, we can't go tr grow tomatoes during the summer because tomatoes don't set fruit with nighttime temperatures above about 75 degrees, which we have a lot of. And so we have to have big plants ready as quickly as possible before the nights get hot and the fruit no longer sets, um, which it, basically they end, they stop setting fruit usually around May. And so it takes a little bit of extra uh, effort to grow tomatoes here in Houston. Um, and what is especially important is season extenders. So um, being able to protect these little guys from frost or even you know, with a little bit of plastic, like a, a low tunnel, open-ended high tunnel, um, things that heat it up just a little bit during the day um, can go a really long way to getting tomatoes uh, longer or even at all here in Houston. So um, these seedlings were started late um, they're probably started around the January 1st because I know by that point I'm like, oh my gosh, we haven't started tomatoes yet. Um, so uh, you can just see that it's quick. Once, once they're up, they take uh, you know, a week or two like most things to germinate and then in a few weeks they are up and I'm ready to go. But still, eight to ten weeks is what you want to give yourself to a really nice, strong transplant. So the reason I'm making this video though is because I'm thinning. I'm uh, taking these little seed clusters, uh, seedlings, and I'm spreading them out because we've got lots of great cultivars here. Um, you see names, Atomic Grape, Chocolate Cherry, Isis Candy, um, Green Vernissage, so pretty exciting stuff. But you always put in multiple seeds, um, and then this is a really great stage to thin them out without creating too much disturbance. Now if you had unlimited seed, you could just go in, like here, there's a cluster. And you could go in and kill all of these others and just leave this one um, and it would probably grow a little bit faster but this is the perfect time when it's got um, these are the seed leaves so the cotyledon leaves and they're actually full of energy that goes to the development of these other leaves when these are still there and these are just starting to come out you'll notice just starting to come out um, just from experience the root system is um, it's not it's not intertwined like these are going to be easy to separate I've been separating them and um, and shouldn't create too much disturbance these actually this whole tray I um, thinned a few days ago so they've already kind of reset and are, are going in it basically wasn't too much disturbance so get them thinned and separated sooner rather than later you don't want to let them sit like these are um, you know crowded for too long and then you'll lose some of that um, momentum to competition because the big thing is the momentum of these plants it needs to have a lot of momentum it never needs to be stressed or stalled out because it's a it's a race against time it's a race against heat and so um, this is what we're growing um, for sharing for the garden here for you know other gardens and if there's extra maybe even selling a few transplants um, so just this is way, way more tomatoes than you need for your garden. Um, you know, single family is like three tomato plants and you'll be fine, six maybe, three to six, because um, you really want big plants that are really productive rather than a lot of little things that only give you a dozen tomatoes. Yes, only a dozen, because people, <laughs> people get excited for one and two. No, tomato plants <laughs> can give you more than that. Um, and I say a dozen, but I mean um, small tomatoes. We don't grow big tomatoes here. Um, last spring we got plenty but um, in general it's not worth the effort the um, large like beefsteak um, Cherokee purple kind of tomatoes um, our season is just not long enough and um, 
they just have more issues. So really it's focused on smaller cluster type tomatoes, cherry type tomatoes um, that we need to focus on. So anyway, let me show you guys what the roots are like um, probably about halfway through this growing out process. So here I'm, I'm going to pull out some of these and we're going to check out their roots. Um, you want to make sure that the plants are fully saturated um, before you do any transplanting, things like that. So I got a little cluster of nice small roots. Um, these are actually pretty poorly developed. Um, so I'm not, you know, definitely not saying I got the system down pat. Um, and actually what they're growing in is straight compost, um, perlite, and a little bit of ag lime. So here's our little guy with his little roots right there, one. Um, and what's really important at this stage, because they have their seed leaves still, they're not so dependent on their roots, two and three. And so not, not a lot of roots at all, barely touching the bottom of the pot, um, ready to go in, and uh, so time to get them in. Just going to make sure that main root goes all the way down. Um, this soil looks a little dry. It's probably borderline. Um, you want to make sure that it's definitely not bone dry. And here's number two. You want to go all the way down. Now, with some plants, it matters um, to keep them at the same level, but not so much with tomatoes. They, um, they root off their stems so easily. Um, however, it might you know lead to some dampening off, or maybe it might help it. I don't really know. But um, a little deeper shouldn't hurt. It'll just keep it more stable. All right, so there you have it. I'm going to get these water right away, and I'm going to just keep on going, doing some more. From 4 inch, they're going to go straight into the ground. All right, you guys. It's been a few weeks, and it's time to get those tomatoes out of the greenhouse and into the ground. I've got a bunch of different kinds I'm going to plant today. Um, we've got some that I purchased from a greenhouse nursery and some that we grew in the back. And um, I'm going to plant some, but I uh, won't even plant all of them because there are potential frosts and always new spots opening up. So we'll get a lot more planted in the next couple weeks. So here's the first spot for a priority tomato. I'm going to pull this little pot out of the way. I'm actually going to pull these beets out because um, save this big pot for a tomato. And we're going to put one right here in the middle, so make some room. So here's a little bit wet because we got over two inches of rain last night. And um, you can see this is the subsoil and this is the compost that comes in quite a bit. Um, this daylily is just going to get shaded out real bad, so that's going to go someplace else. Get repotted. Nice little daylily. And um, actually, I might mix some of this. So um, I'm not amending at all. Um, this is really wet. I wish I had some amendments handy. I would mix in some compost, some partially finished stuff to lighten this. But sometimes that just makes a water well. Um, it's hard to tell because this is this is just fully saturated from last night's rain. But what you can see is that I'm going nice and deep, um, and that's because this transplant is nice and leggy and that's a great way to um, fix it with tomatoes. You can even lay them on their side if they're a little less um, old and stiff. Um, you can bend them sideways and then more of the roots are exposed. But basically I'm going to drop this down, maybe even a little deeper. Tomatoes will root all over that stem and they really do well in a high um, fertility organic soil so that's why mixing in that compost where you plant your tomato is not going to hurt it at all. You could plant a nearly straight compost with tomatoes and be just fine. Um, the hay is one to help bring in the fertility and the biology but also to help keep it warm and insulated because we might get a cold snap. We're probably not going to get a freeze or even a frost. but. Um, just to keep it a little warmer as it's getting its roots out into the soil.
right, you guys, so these are the plants you saw me pot up a, a few weeks ago, and it's time for them to go into their forever home in the pot here. Uh, the mix is compost. This is some really great stuff if you go to the farmer's market on Wakefield um, and see Gus. He sells it for $7 a bag, but we've also added uh, a little bit of perlite for drainage, a little bit of uh, lime, the ag lime, for calcium and magnesium, and you also might want to amend with some phosphorus if you had those amendments available. And so let's see, maybe the roots got a little better last time, remember they were pretty weak. Downside of planting six plants in a tray is they all sometimes fall out. We did pretty good. So the roots got a lot better, um, and that was just from letting them dry out a little more and grow out of it. This is another really great ingredient in this process. This is the um, hay that's already started to break down, and it has a lot of fertility in it. So that's going to be our bottom layer. And then I'm going to go and grab some really nice fresh hay and just pile the hay on because the hay breaks down really quickly and adds a lot of fertility, brings a lot of life in. All right, now this is a cage that we can add on to if we need to. So this little uh, black cherry plant is all set and ready to go. A lot of tomatoes got planted, so here they are. This is Black Beauty. And this is Lucid Gem. Dun, dun, dun. This is Dark Galaxy. This is Black Cherry. This is Atomic Grape. This is Black Vernissage. This is another Dark Galaxy. So one's in the ground, one's in a pot. This is Purple Bumblebee. A little stripy. That's Dharma. This is Sunrise Bumblebee, which is the lighter side of the stripy. And this is the rest of the garden for a little bit of a tour. There's some kale. Lots of pansies. There's some strawberries in with those pansies starting to make some fruit. Some bulb onion, some green onion, lots of broccoli that went uneaten. These are artichokes. This is cauliflower, lemongrass that froze out, broccoli, um, purple cauliflower. These haven't made their heads yet. Um, just a bunch of lettuce ready to be eaten on. And more kale and some kohlrabi out there. Swiss chard. You guys know carrots, uh, mustard, that's this one, and then it kind of goes into mizuna, that's broccoli though, some mizuna, um, that's nothing. This is, um, it's actually an edible one though, it's um, Florida betony, I think it's stackies something, makes a root, and uh, then we're back over here with some new lettuce, some sweet peas, potatoes that are coming up. This was from the early planting, they got some freeze damage, and lots of calendula, lemon tree, collards over here and just the Buddha and the Buddha and that is the garden so hope you guys like this video if you did give it a thumbs up and I will see y'all next time peace